Witchfire is an upcoming dark fantasy first person shooter set in an alternate world where witches are real and very dangerous and we play as a witch hunter. The game is being developed and most likely published by an independent studio, The Astronauts, and this game was first teased back in 2017 and since then fans have been anxiously awaiting news and the eventual release for this title. I will say before we start, no the title has not been cancelled and the team recently gave an update on their progress last month. So let's break down all the teases, gameplay, and production updates on this game. As always, all the sources will be posted in the description below, so make sure to check those out and support those original writers. And with that out of the way, let's get into everything we know about Witchfire. Let's start with some quick history on the studio behind the game, who are the Astronauts. As I mentioned, they are the same studio behind the game The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which was an adventure horror game that was released back in 2014 for all the modern consoles and PC. With this new project, the team wanted to create something new for them and change the direction. So many members of their team also worked on Ethan Carter, but they also picked up some new members who'd previously worked on Painkiller and Bulletstorm, which are both first person shooters. So the studio does have previous experience with the FPS genre, and for the most part that's all you really need to know on the studio to understand Witchfire that yes they do have expertise in the first person shooter and they just aren't a one trick pony with the vanishing of Ethan Carter. So now let's discuss the announcement and development of the game. I'm going to break down the development by year so you can kind of get an idea of what the team was thinking at the time and how it's progressed since its first announcement in 2017. So the first teaser for the game was shown off at the Game Awards 2017 to build up hype for the project, and the trailer itself did exactly that. It built up an early community around the game and started to drum up mystery and questions from fans. The fans had initial questions about the project and when we could expect to see more details. In a blog post released one day after the reveal, the team gave some additional details on the game itself. Now I am going to get to those additional details, but I just want to jump a little bit further ahead and say in a later blog post, the team said they had actually started development for the project in 2015 after the team took a year off after the release of Vanishing of Ethan Carter, and the project actually started as a science fiction post-apocalyptic survival simulator. Eventually that project was scrapped and nothing was brought over from Witchfire, but that's where the team states that they really started development for this second project, and they don't reveal that till way later down the road, so I'm just going to add it in here so we can kind of get this chronological timeline. So in 2015, they started working on this sci-fi project, it was shortly cancelled, and then they started Witchfire. Now, in the blog post that was released after the teaser, the team starts by saying the game is still nowhere near completion, and it will be a long time before it's ready. So they are not being secretive about the project on purpose, but more so because they are still trying to figure out what this project will be, and don't want to promise features that could possibly change throughout the development cycle. They also say the game will run on Unreal Engine 4, and explain some of the technology used to make this game. They announced they are using a new version of their photogrammetry technology, which they had previously used in The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which allows them to scan real life objects or even buildings, and then transfer that data into their games, which gives a lot of their projects really good realism, depth, and makes it feel like a real world. Now, they say they can now push this technology even further in this title, and they also announced that they are not promising any platforms at this time for the project other than PC and Steam. So some conjecture on my part is that it's likely it could come to other consoles, I will touch on this later, but if we use the vanishing of Ethan Carter as evidence, that game made it to the PS4, Xbox One, and even more recently the Nintendo Switch along with PC. Now this wasn't all at the same time and it did take them time to develop and release it. All the releases were separated, so I assume this game could follow a similar path. And for the most part, that's all the initial information we had after this first blog post and all the information we knew about the game in 2017. And then the team was silent about the project for an entire year. The next blog post came in December of 2018 and addresses the absence of information from the team itself. 
The post says, quote, Nothing dramatic is happening. We're working on the game every day. It's just that eight people, even with the help of some amazing outsources and a fantastic engine, we can't really move faster with a project like this. We still want to remain a tight team, but this might change in the future when they have all the features of the game fully proven. They also announced they've created dozens of weapons already and have modeled and animated a lot of enemies. They are finishing up the AI for the enemies and the graphic artists have been working on map assets for two years. The team also gave some additional details about the protagonists and describes them as the quote, punishing hand of the church. Now, as for the story, the team states that Witchfire is not a story-based game. There is going to be lore to discover and decipher throughout our gameplay, but there will not be any distinct cutscenes, and they tease that the heart of the game is somewhere else, but they just aren't ready to talk about it yet. And they close out this 2018 blog post by saying that players should not expect the game to release in 2019, but 2020 might be possible. And that's the end of the initial 2018 blog post. But the team did release another post later in December to give fans more details when concerns were expressed about the game not being story driven. So in this updated December blog post, the team clarifies that yes, there will be a story in Witchfire, but not in a traditional sense. Instead, they describe it as a distributed narrative, which is similar to Bloodborne and Dark Souls, where the player collects information throughout gameplay, which then leads to bigger information about the world, and it also gives players the option to either focus and discover on the world and the lore for themselves, or they can just play the game for the combat, and they aren't going to bog down that experience with story if that's not what players want. So it's really going to let you kind of choose how you want to experience this world and how you want to understand the story. And that is everything we learned about the game in 2018. And then we can start to talk about what we know about the development in 2019. So early on in the year, the team stated they had begun to work on a vertical slice of the game. And the purpose of this is to fully flesh out a small portion of the game so they can test it and see if what they are working on works on a small scale. So it's a way to test combat, some of the enemy AI, the player AI, weapons. It's a way to just cut down the game to just one small section, get it as close to perfect as possible, play that section and see if it works, and then if they want to expand these ideas to the full game. So just a test. And they said they were putting all of their resources to this. And that the main focus of this vertical slice was going to be combat for the game to see if they could get it solid, something that fans could be excited for. So after that in April, they announced they had finished the combat vertical slice, but it had actually become too polished and doesn't match the rest of the game. The slice and development had taken longer than the team originally anticipated, and they also announced to disregard the previous release timeframes they'd given, and the game will mostly be done when it's done. The team then started to release some small pieces of gameplay and things they had been working on, and fans started to discuss if the game will be downgraded when it's finally ready for release. The team actually responded to these comments and said that they hate fake trailers as much as players do. They announced that everything they have shown off from Witchfire is taken directly from their PCs, and nothing has been done to make the game's graphics look better than it actually plays. It was also around the same time in May of 2019 that the team had stated they had started to work on an internal, very rough but playable version of the game. And now let's fast forward to July of 2019, when the team announced they were in a development lull on the project, and announced to get out of the lull they were going to shift development from the game to 100% support on a demo. So the team took all of August off and returned in September of 2019. The results were very good and they were optimistic about their demo. Obviously this demo is not for public use, but they said the game is shaping up to be fun and it was a very useful experience for the team to get away from their previous tasks and to all come together to work on this smaller form of the game but bigger than a vertical slice. And out of this they said they figured out what they want the top level structure of the game to be, and said the game will be structured to be played in smaller periods, and they estimate that those play times will be around 15 minutes, but that gameplay loop can be played over and over, and then you will look up and you will see you have been playing for hours. So they really want to nail down this core, short-term, 
keeps people interested and then after they're done they can jump back in and keep doing this repeatedly for many hours of the game it seems like will have a lot of replay value. They said they also reworked weapons to make the RNG system more forgiving. This game will have perks on weapons and they said they will explain the weapon system in the future but yes there will be some sort of perks, weapons will drop, you will be able to change them out and then you can optimize your loot depending on your playstyle. A few other changes is they said they understand the sweet spot for level size in terms of how big the map should be, how to utilize cover in the game when dodging enemies, and also the amount of enemies on screen and the challenge of the enemies themselves. They said they learned all of this and it began using what they learned to create a second demo and add more to the second demo and get it even more polished because the first one was still small in scope and only included one weapon that was playable and one spell ability. So they wanted to expand this even further, add in more weapons, more spells, and use what they learned in terms of map size, difficulty, etc. And then the final update of 2019 was released and covered the team's recently finished Demo 2, which now included four weapons in game, three of which were hand cannons and one bolt action rifle. And they also now had two light spells and four heavy spells. They don't give more details about what this means, but for the most part, I would say most fans understand the difference between light and heavy attacks, and we'll see something similar there. They said they now had six enemy types in game, a boss, and three different areas, along with a new HUD they'd been working on in the second demo. Now, all of which is subject to change, but it is still progress. They said almost everything went right with this second demo and the gameplay loop is set at this point at the end of 2019. And they said their goal now for 2020 was to finish a new system warning, which is basically a way to alert players when they are being targeted by enemies from behind, which they said is something that comes up a lot in the game because there are so many enemies on screen and this and that. They wanted to give players a way that doesn't be too intrusive with a warning, but lets players know there's something behind you. You should turn around because you don't want to get hit. And the team also stated for 2020 they were going to start work on their final demo. And now we can transition into 2020 and the development so far. Now the progress reports do start to get more and more sparse. And for the most part, it's just a lot of things that we already know. So the first statement from the team on the new year was that the game was not going to be a looter shooter, which I will touch on a little bit later, but this was in response to a gameplay video where loot can be seen exiting the body of a dead enemy and their comments about having weapons with rolls and a little bit of RNG in the game, which got fans worried that this game was going to be less like Dark Souls and more like Borderlands which the team said is just not the case. The team said it will take inspiration from Dark Souls and some inspiration from Borderlands, but not enough to be considered just one of each game. It's going to be its own thing. There will be RNG and there will be Souls-like elements, but it's not going to be completely one way or the other, which I think is actually for the best that they are trying to create an even new genre between these two. Then, in the spring update in July of 2020, the team announced they were finally going in full production. They know the direction and ideas to make the game work, and are now working on executing those ideals. It's no longer prototyping and figuring out what they're going to add, they now know, and now it's just the hard grindstone to get there. They said they're adding new enemies, areas, and weapons, all of which will take time given the size of the team itself. They also said they are trying to finalize a bigger gameplay segment and instead of being 15 to 20 minutes, they said now they're looking at the gameplay loop being closer to 30 minutes. Also, COVID has started to affect the progress of the game, but they have learned from their missteps and are working to optimize the work at home order moving forward. And that brings us current up to everything we know about the game in terms of development. So. They have this gameplay loop down, they're expanding it, and now it's just building out the world and really fleshing out the game itself. And that's for the most part everything we know about the official development updates. Next, I want to transition into a few smaller subjects that are good if you aren't too interested in the development process itself and just want to know what to expect from the game. 
So in terms of gameplay, as I mentioned before, the game is not a looter shooter. The core gameplay will include some forms of loot, such as different weapons and items, which they haven't really touched on called talismans. And these will have RNG, which will give said weapons varying abilities. So as you progress through the game, you will be able to upgrade your loot and it will make the game easier. And that's for the most part all they have mentioned as of now. There could be even more RNG and loot we just don't know about. And they also said the game is not going to be a Souls game either. The team has stated they're taking inspiration from Souls games in terms of how they're going to tell their story, setting, and feel, but it's not going to be a direct Souls game. They also have said the game is not just a painkiller remake. And the last thing is the game is not really going to be a horror game either, which the team has been vocal about. It's more of a dark fantasy action game than a true horror. Plus, they have also teased an endgame, which they just haven't given any more details about. They have also announced they will be experimenting with different movement styles, and that we might have a stamina bar in-game for our dash ability, which they've shown off a ton to give the player really good mobility. And the last thing they mention in gameplay is that the HUD will be customizable to suit each player's style. There have been comments and concerns about the current HUD, but they have said, you know, if you want to play this game with as realistic as possible with no HUD, just the weapon on screen, they say you will be able to customize it. And we just aren't sure what that looks like yet, but they have promised that. And they said to hold off on a lot of judgment because they still haven't really finished the HUD design, at least publicly, so that could change drastically by the time we get to the end of development. Now let's get into some of the enemy details that have been confirmed. The team has hinted there will be different enemy factions. It was only in one post and it was early on in development so it always is subject to change, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are different enemies categorized into these different factions and then are located in their respective areas. That's not a new concept for these games. As of now, enemies will have health bars above their heads and damage numbers will be shown when they're attacked. The team has said they are not final with these designs, but it has been in most of the recent updates for the game. The team has also teased two different types of generic enemies called Charged and Uncharged. Charged enemies are powered up by witches, and more specifically, the witches fire. The enemy's weapons are ignited in flames, and they are given a ranged fire attack. They will always be in their respective form, so a charged enemy will not get uncharged, and uncharged enemies cannot become charged. So they won't switch, but it will add more layers to combat when you have to decide what you want to fight first. Another enemy the team has teased is this massive ogre character. The lore is that it's the body of a drowned man after his body has inflated from being in the sea, and the weapon the creature is using is a ship cannon. And the result is really awesome and seems to be like a true threat. And we've also kind of seen them play around with the size of this ogre, so it could change, and it sometimes looks like it's way bigger than the size of a normal person, but I bet they have lore to explain that as well. And a few other of the enemies that have been teased are a skeleton knight and a few other variations of that. Along with a musketeer type enemy and so much more, they're just holding a lot close to the chest and don't want to show off everything before the game is finished. Now we can move on to some of the weapons players should expect to see when playing the game. So far the team has teased a crossbow, a pistol, and the pistol comes in a lot of variations or they call it mostly a hand cannon. We can expect a shotgun and a bolt action rifle. They said the early designs were based off weapons from the World Wars, but the team has since gone through a massive redesign with the weapons they had initially made. It's keeping the same base and size of the weapon, but adding elements to make them feel like they fit into this fantastical dark fantasy world. And the result has been very cool. The pistol has been the team's example to show what the progress is going to look like from start to finish with the redesign. And it looks really good. Some of the gold accents and new crosshairs all really work. The team has also stated there will be magical weapons and spells. We aren't sure what the magical weapons will look like, but they have started to tease some of the magic we can see, the first being the Storm Ball, which is a magical grenade, which started as a ball of electricity and electrocutes enemies as it passes by them. But the team decided to change this idea and shift it to more of a biblical interpretation, and they want it to seem like the heavens will thunder upon the enemies. 
so they want the player to summon an actual cloud of rain and thunder that will damage enemies instead of this electric ball. They said obviously this isn't the final iteration of the spell, and have a few more surprises and secrets for some of the spells we will get to play with. And the final thing I'll say about weapons is there's not going to be a weapon wheel. We will be forced to decide which weapons are worth carrying and which ones players will leave behind. The team hasn't given too many more details on this mechanic, but have been firm on the stance that we won't be able to carry every piece of gear we find and tough decisions will have to be made. And let's close out discussing the platforms players should expect to play Witchfire on. As of January 2019, the team has still not decided if they are going to promise the game on consoles, but they do give hope to console players. They say UE4 is a multi-platform engine, and they are working on gamepad support for PC, which is a lot of the heavy lifting already done. They say it could happen, but it also will probably be similar to Ethan Carter if it does, where it's a process the team undertakes after the game is initially released on PC. As for PC players, the game is confirmed for you and they have said Steam, and they've also promised a ton of customization options. Like I said, the HUD will be customized, it will have full FOV support and resolution support, and the team has even stated working on ultra-wide support. So what should fans expect from the game in 2021 and beyond? Well, the game is definitely at least a year, if not two, away at a minimum, just in terms of sheer development. In the most recent update they gave, they did say the game is still in full production, but they are still designing and playtesting to finalize those ideas, and it just takes a lot longer with a small team. Now, it's not impossible that we see the game in 2021, but if it does happen, it will most likely be late 2021, and as I said, only PC to start. 2022 seems just as likely as 2021 as released for the project, but for the most part that's just all speculation on my part, but with the team in full production I do think we will be seeing the game sooner rather than later now. The game still looks just as interesting as the first time it was teased all those years ago, and I'm excited to see the game come together and what the future development updates look like when the game starts to get polished and finalized. And for the most part, that is everything we know about Witchfire and where I'm going to end this video. Make sure to like and share, subscribe for weekly gaming news, and I will see you guys in the next one.